Greetings, YouTube. Maybe you're one of the far and few optimistic people who are excited about the potential of AI and what it can do for us, our artwork, and society. <laughs> or like most, maybe you think that AI is the bane of existence and is slowly leading us and our society on an existential downward spiral of death. Well, either way, a warm welcome to this video. In this video, we're gonna do something completely antithetical to most of my videos, and we're gonna use the powerful features of Darktable to make some powerful edits to some photos generated with AI, specifically some software called Stable Diffusion. So stick around and enjoy this one last cup of coffee with me as I'm fully expecting to be banned forever for photographic blasphemy. So the truth is, is I actually had quite a bit of anxiety about making this video in the recent light of what's going on with Adobe and whatnot. So I decided to stick to my guns and make this video, not to associate Darktable with the likes of the funky things going on with AI, but the truth is, is there are many artists out there using AI to generate some rather beautiful and intriguing artwork. And Darktable is not only a very capable and powerful raw editor, but a very adept editor for JPEG files and PNG files as well. And genuinely, I hope to challenge the preconceived notions you might have of AI artwork. So all photos for this video were generated using an open source software called Stable Diffusion with an interface called Comfy UI. And I used a model called DreamShaper XL. All right, so for the sake of this video, I'm not gonna go into the intricate details of how I generated these photos, but I encourage you to go on YouTube and search more about Stable Diffusion and Comfy UI and any of the other interfaces and learn more. All right, so I'm absolutely exhilarated and terrified at the same time that AI was actually able to generate this photo. I asked Stable Diffusion to generate a photo of a fisherman in Yangshao, China against a warm yellow background of the sun coming through some mountains and some moisture coming off of the water, creating this beautiful scene. And I'm pretty amazed at the results I got. Let's go ahead and edit this photo. All right, so I noticed when I generated this photo that the uh, sun was still a little bit hard and not as quite as soft and diffused as I wanted it to be. So the first thing we're gonna do here in dark table is actually soften that sun and make it more soft and smooth. And then the second thing is, is this is a relatively monotoned image with just really just orange and yellow. And I'd like to make this a bit more of a dual toned image. So I'm gonna go ahead and color grade this into an orange teal look. And one more thing that's really important, uh, Normally when I'm editing photos in Darktable, I'm working with RAW files that come directly off my camera and RAW files have a lot more information than JPEGs or PNGs like here, a lot more depth. Uh, and therefore it's easier to make uh, more extreme changes because we have a lot more information to work with. We don't have that here, but we can still make uh, some pretty, some pretty significant changes. We just have to be more modest with our approach. All right, so the very first thing I like to do with most of my edits is I'm gonna go ahead and add a frame here by going to the framing module and turning that on. And I like to usually use a frame of around 5%. So I'm gonna change the size to that and then zoom out a little bit. All right, so to make the sun a bit more soft, we're gonna use a module called diffuse or sharpen. I'm gonna search for that up here. And inside the diffuse or sharpen module, I'm gonna go ahead and look for a preset called bloom and apply that to the photograph. Now by default, obviously it's gonna apply it to the whole photograph and we don't want that. We just wanna apply it to the sun and the area around the sun. So to uh, control that, we're gonna use a drawn mask. So I'm gonna go ahead and click uh, the drawn mask option down here and go ahead and draw a mask. All right, so since our sun is circular, I'm gonna go ahead and pick a circular mask and I'm gonna go ahead and place it over the sun area. Now by default, I think that this is actually looking pretty good. I might expand it just a little bit and then expand the center area, maybe something like that. There we go. And we can actually go ahead and click this circle icon right here and see the mask that we have. 
That looks pretty good, I think. All right, so one more thing we can do is we could actually increase the strength of the effect if we want by increasing the iterations to maybe two or three. If I expand that, it's a bit too much and try around two. And I think that's even still a bit much. So I'm going to leave it at default of one. I'm going to go ahead and zoom in here a little bit, get a little closer and turn the effect off and back on again. Yeah, I think that looks pretty good. It's, it's still has a little bit of hardness to it, but it's a lot softer. And I think that looks more natural with the haze and the, the moisture coming off the water. There we go. That's closer to the way I envisioned in my head when I prompted this photograph in the first place. Awesome. All right, so let's go ahead and color grade this photograph towards more of an orange teal appearance. And if we look at the photograph, we'll see that we have a lot of orange and yellow in the highlights of the scene from the sun. And the other part of the photograph is the shadows, which is right now taking in more of a neutral appearance. And what I'd like to do is shift the shadows towards a teal, giving it more of a dual toned orange teal appearance. All right, so the way we can do that is we can make another instance of our color balance RGB module. So I'm gonna go into the color balance RGB module go up here and hit new instance. And now we have our new instance. And the reason why I'm making a new instance of color balance RGB is because if I make some final touches uh, to the original color balance RGB, I'd like to separate that transaction from the color grading process, making it easier to show what steps I'm doing to my image. And I can reverse them and see if I like it. It gives you a lot more flexibility. All right, so let's go ahead and go inside of our new color balance RGB module into the four ways tab. And when we open up the four ways tab, we're presented with various options to affect different regions of the photograph. The shadows lift is for the shadows. The highlights gain is obviously for the highlights and the power is for the uh, midtones regions of the photographs. So we're interested in the shadows lift for the shadows region. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to adjust this hue slider here and select more of a blue teal colored tone right about here. And then I'm going to slowly pull up the chroma slider to start adding that color to the shadows. And I'm going to start by adding it too much to see it uh, more glorified here. It's obviously too much and unnatural, but if we do this in a very subtle way, we can add some teal to the shadows, adding some extra depth to this photograph. I think it looks nice right about there. I'm gonna go ahead and turn it off, turn it on. I think it still might be a little bit too much. I'm gonna pull it back just a little bit. There we go. That's a nice subtle effect, adding a lot of depth and character to this photograph. All right, so I'm gonna make one more final finishing touch to this photograph, and that's adding just a little bit of extra vibrance to bring out the uh, saturation of the more subtle, fainter color hues. And I think that's gonna help out with the, the teal, the subtle teal tones just a little bit. There we go. All right, so it's pretty remarkable that AI was somehow able to generate this photograph. I mean, honestly, it's absolutely insane. Uh, I'm both, like I said before, I'm both excited and terrified at the same time, but I'm really happy with the adjustments we were gonna make here in Darktable, and I'm really happy with the result. Tell me what you think in the comment section below. All right, so I got one more photo edit for you guys, and a bit more of a complex one, and that's of this portrait of a beautiful forest nymph in a sacred forest with golden light shining through the trees through an ethereal fog. Here we go. All right, so what I'd like to accomplish with this edit is to give this photograph a bit more of an appearance that's similar to like an analog film like Portrait 400, the uh, infamous portrait film where the highlights are maybe a bit more soft in kind of like a dreamlike way, and maybe the colors are a bit more subtle and faded. And then I'd like to add some halation that film would naturally have where it blurs the edges of your photograph and then maybe add some film grain as well. So when I originally prompted this uh, photograph in Stable Diffusion, I actually asked it to give me something like Portrait 400. And right off the bat, it's actually pretty remarkably close. But I'm, I think I can nudge it in that direction a little bit more. All right, so the very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add my traditional frame, which I like to have around when I'm editing the photograph. There we go. All right, so there's really two ways we could go about this, and there's the easy way, and then there's the more complex hard way that gives us a lot more control. So the easy way 
is we could use a LUT to add a Portrait 400 effect to our photograph to push it even more in the Portrait 400 direction. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that real quick. It offers a nice guidepost in the direction we're heading. Um, so I'm gonna select a LUT for Portrait 400 right here and apply it to the photograph and reduce its strength to about 40% or so. There we go. Yeah, and that looks like Portrait 400. So what I'm actually gonna do though is I'm gonna duplicate this and I'm gonna now work with the new copy and we'll have the original one as a reference. If you'd like to learn a bit more about LUTs and how to apply them in Darktable, check out the video card above. All right, so let's recreate this effect ourselves, but with more control. So the very first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make some adjustments to the uh, color balance RGB module. Now, Portrait 400 isn't very saturated of a film at all, but it's certainly not saturated in the highlights. So I'm gonna actually adjust the per uh, perceptual saturation grading and pull the highlights down quite a bit. and Maybe add just a little bit to the shadows in response. There we go. All right, and like the last photograph, the next thing I'm gonna do is color grade this photograph. So I'm gonna create another instance of color balance RGB and go into the four ways tab. And like the last photograph, I'd like to add a bit more teal to the shadows, a bit more of that blue teal, just a little bit. And I'd also, in contrast, like to add some orange to the highlights, creating kind of a warm, cool effect which I think is rather film-like. And I'm not trying to replicate Portrait 400 exactly, but something in the essence of that. That looks nice. All right, so before I recreate some film halation and some film grain, I'd like to make one more quick adjustment. I'm gonna go into the original color balance RGB module, and I wanna push up the highlights just a little bit because I wanna make the sun just a little bit more piercing without being harsh or hard. It still should be soft and dreamlike. I just want a bit more sun in this photograph. There we go. All right, so the creator of Darktable, Aurelien Pierre, has an excellent video on Portrait 400. And within that video, he shows a process to recreate the halation effect of film. And that's what we're gonna do here, and I'm gonna do that quick and dirty. If you'd like to see more details on that process, definitely check out his video because it's amazing. All right, so what film halation is, is like a natural diffusion, a softness that comes with analog film, and it tends to create like a purple fringe around the edges in your photograph, and we're gonna recreate that in dark table using the diffuse or sharpen module, specifically two instances of the diffuse or sharpen module, one with the red channel and one with the blue channel. And when you combine red and blue, you get purple. All right, and since my stupid face is gonna get in the way when we do this, I'm gonna go ahead and temporarily turn off my cam. All right, let's start off with the red channel. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up diffuse or sharpen. And within diffuse or sharpen, I'm gonna start off with the bloom preset. And inside the bloom preset, I'm just interested in the first and fourth order speed, and I'm gonna pull back the strength of both of those a little bit. Now, for the scope of this video, I'm not gonna go into what this all means in the Diffuser Sharpen module, but you can certainly look up uh, videos on Diffuser Sharpen and learn more, so just follow along with me. So, after we've gotten that set up, I'm gonna go down here and click this circle icon, and what I wanna do, do is adjust this blend mode. So I wanna switch this to just use the red channel, like so. So if we zoom into our uh, nymph here, we'll see that we now have this red haze around the wings and the, the edges in our photograph, giving us our first step. All right, so now that we have red to get blue, we wanna duplicate this instance of the fuser sharpen and then change it over to blue. So I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate this instance. Now I'm gonna go down here to the blend and change it to the uh, blue channel. And then because for the uh, color tone of purple I'm looking for, I think I want red to dominate just a little bit more. So I'm gonna go ahead and change the uh, opacity of this blue uh, channel here to about maybe 60% or so. If we zoom in, we should see that we have 
a purple fringe around this photograph, creating natural film halation or something very similar to it. And of course, we can adjust the strength of these bars to change the uh, strength of the effect and customize it, of course. And uh, now let's go ahead and add some film grain. All right, so film grain is an easy add-on. We can go up to the search bar and just type in grain and add some grain. We want to zoom in a little bit. And I think that the default setting is going to work nicely. All right, there we go. All right, because I'm silly, I, I realized I had this uh, 3D LUT module on the whole time of Portrait 400, and I want to turn that off here. Um, and as a result, I'm going to go ahead and check my uh, color balance RGB. I'm going to add just a little bit more mid-tone and shadow color. There we go. So if we go ahead and compare it to the original we made with just the LUT module, into here, it's pretty similar, but I like the new one that we created in the uh, manually ourselves. I think it looks a bit more natural, and it looks really analog, and it looks really soft. It has the soft, faded colors of something like Portrait 400, and I think it's a great portrait, and it's pretty insane again that this is generated by AI. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. All right, so I hope you found this video interesting and thought-provoking, and I hope you learned something about Darktable as well. And if this video provokes some really interesting thoughts for you about AI and artwork, I'm honestly dying to know, and I'd love to hear more about it in the comment section below. And lastly, if you'd like to learn more about the powerful features of Darktable and photo editing, check out this video here.